Hi, I'm Phil and I'm on a grey gap year and today I'm flying business class with British Airways from Frankfurt to Heathrow. But that's only part of the story because on this rather peculiar flight I'll be flying short haul Club Europe but I'll be sitting in a long haul Club World Club Suite. Although I couldn't review the full Club World and Club Suite experience, I had about an hour in the air to review the suite itself and to enjoy the Club Europe service. I was also delayed so I had a stroll around Frankfurt Airport and I explored two different lounges. Well, i got to say, I, so far I quite like Frankfurt Airport. Upstairs there's like a big play area for children next to a McDonald's, perfectly all put together. I'm sure if you want to find a nice quiet place to sit you can find it. Uh, I've come out onto this lovely terrace. Um, like a plane spotting. This is all pre-security as well. We're delayed. I've got a couple of hours before I'm even due to depart and we're nowhere near there yet. So I'm a bit concerned about lounge access. So I'm going to go downstairs and get a boarding card printed off, even though I can just use the one on my phone. Uh, I want to make sure that I get lounge access and I know which lounge I can go in and where that lounge is. So I don't want to go through security like I did in Catania and then find that I'm actually stuck standing up for three hours while I wait for the plane. my boarding card printed off uh, and go through security um, and the lounge is the other side of there near D5 apparently so that, that's going to work out well. One thing I forgot to ask is do I get fast track security? I guess I'm just going to end up standing in the queue with everyone else because I, I hate being turned away but I have paid for a business class ticket so it often does. Shall I be brave and ask? Yeah let's be brave and ask. I accessed the Prime Class Lounge using my Priority Pass and it was almost empty of fellow passengers. It had a main single open space with lots of windows but I think if this got full then it's very quickly going to become noisy and claustrophobic. But it did have this smaller TV room where you could possibly retreat to if things got too hectic in the main lounge area. The bar wasn't staffed and I'm not sure if this was a help yourself free bar or an ask someone because it's chargeable bar. There was a reasonable range of drinks in the fridge and a bean to cup coffee machine and there was a reasonable amount of hot and cold food options. The lounge looked like it had been empty for a while however the food looked fresh, inviting, the station was clean and well maintained. I tried a few different items from the hot buffet selection and it was all good and tasty. The chicken breast looked really dry and overcooked but it was actually juicy and succulent. And the red cabbage salad was a surprise winner of the buffet with a crisp, tart and beautiful flavour. The One World Lounge that I had access to with my ticket was the Japan Airlines Sakura Lounge for business class passengers. But I think my status should have given me access to the first class lounge. I didn't have long though, so I just entered the lounge I was directed to. And I like the lighter colour scheme of this lounge, but the layout of these desks and tables here in this section, it kind of made me feel like a school classroom or maybe uh, exam time. There was a good selection of quality help yourself drinks, there was Grey Goose Vodka and Fever Tree Tonic as well as others. The food offering was quite limited though, it was mostly sort of soup and sandwiches and it had to be ordered from a menu. I did have just enough time to enjoy an espresso and a panna cotta. As, as a bit of a panna cotta fan and a bit of an aficionado, uh, this one just had too much topping for me to really enjoy the, the main event, which is the cool vanilla panna cotta itself. I mean, you know, I still finished it. One well, of those funny airports where you do it in two stages. So I've gone through passport control, got my passport stamped, second stamp of the new passport, and the security section is now at the gate. Now, I don't like airports like this because you don't know how long you've got. You've got, to, <clears throat> you've got to get through security, 
which means leaving the lounge and once you're through you're there you're stuck you can't go oh we've been delayed another hour i want to go back again you're stuck that's it so your lounge access gets neutralized at that point even if i didn't have lounge access i'd much rather be sat in the bar sipping a lemonade than uh, fighting for a hard metal seat in the uh, in the departures area there was a 30 minute wait at the gate and then a bit of a kerfuffle with the gate agent just had a gate agent get a bit upset thought i was recording but i was not so uh <laughs> always good <laughs> Once the misunderstanding was resolved, I was permitted to board. Hiya. How are you? Very well, thank you. And you? Not too bad. Okay, sir. Over. Around and in front row. Thank you. How are you doing? I walked through the first class cabin, which did have empty seats if I'd wanted to sit in first again, through to seat 5K. I put my seatbelt on and prepared for takeoff, saying goodbye to a miserable few days in Frankfurt. I might make a video about my time in Frankfurt, but the short version is I don't recommend going there and definitely don't go on a Sunday because everything's shut. If you'd like to see me being miserable for three days in Frankfurt, leave me a comment and I'll make the video. The crew were quick out the blocks with the mill service and the staff on the flight were excellent. They lived up to the high standards that I've come to expect from BA cabin crew. It was one of my favourites in Club Europe, it's the afternoon tea with a glass of champagne. The classic cucumber sandwich. I think this one was smoked salmon. And a cheese roll with a lovely chutney. I do love chutneys and pickles. Now don't hate me because I put cream first on my scone. If there was a good salted butter I wouldn't bother with cream on scones at all. But if you want to tell me how you like your scones in the comments then please do. I think this could get fun. And to end a British cream tea, the most British cake out there, a slice of Battenberg. And of course I had a lovely cup of BAT. And I settled into the seat and explored the in-flight entertainment. The screen looked brand new and it looked better than the one I'd experienced in first a few days before. But it was still slow and unresponsive, which is really poor for what's supposed to be a new product. I wasn't provided with any headphones or any other amenities because this is a 90 minute Club Europe flight but I always bring my own Bose noise cancelling headphones anyway and these are much better than anything the airlines are going to give you. There was some innovative storage around the seat with a decent bin that fitted my phone, power bank and headphones. It had two USB ports and a universal plug. Now this also held the uh, headphone jack and the remote control for the TV. This smaller bin would have held a passport or a wallet perhaps, maybe a pair of glasses, but not much else. There's also a vanity mirror, which is nice. Now, I really like the tray table design. It's a daft thing to say, I know, but I really did. Once you've found the release catch, it slides out easily and in two parts, so you can actually slide in and out of your seat without having to completely stow the tray table. Now the seat itself is the main attraction of course, and it's easy to adjust with this self-explanatory control panel, and in life art mode it felt really comfortable. If it was an overnight flight then there would have been a mattress topper, but you know, this, this seat felt okay without it. There's some additional storage for you to pop your shoes in and what looks like a decent foot cubby. But you know, I'm five foot four, so I'm not the best person to speak about comfort levels for those who are over six feet tall. The door gives it a feeling of privacy when you're lying down and I'm looking forward to booking one of these for an overnight flight. I, I want to give it a proper test drive. But until then, I really enjoyed my short time in the BA club suite and it was a fun product to sit in. Now, comparing it to the first class seat I sat in, previously the door in the club suite gives it privacy but it also gives you a little bit less space a little bit less elbow room and it can feel a bit like you're in an office cubicle and that's partially due to the gray color scheme the first seat color scheme is cream colored it's more spacious and the in-flight entertainment screen tucks away to leave the seat more open with more space and it just feels more luxurious 
The two seats are both excellent seats and also of very similar quality, but comparing the hard product to just those two seats themselves, taking nothing else into account, for me, I would pick the first class seat. It just feels a bit more open and I think it edges it in a direct competition. BA don't usually fly wide-body planes with the club suite in them in Europe. I found out about these flights from the Simply Flying website. But Iberia, they do fly wide-body planes daily between London and Madrid. Uh, thank you to everyone who commented on this uh, on my previous video. I found flights scheduled on the Airbus A330 and an A350, uh, but Iberia could swap this equipment out um, at a moment's notice and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Iberia aren't the only airline to regularly fly wide-body aircraft in Europe. Emirates, Singapore, Ethiopian and some others do too. And the best resource I've found for finding these flights is an article on the Head for Points website and I'll leave a link to that in the description. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you have perhaps you'll be kind enough to give me a like or subscribe to the channel and it won't cost you anything but it will help me out with the YouTube algorithm. I'm a new channel and I'm just getting started on my YouTube journey. So thank you for watching and joining me on my grey gap year.